we're moving on. We're over here. Uh, we are. This is my leach field. So I have a septic system. I live in the countryside. Uh, this is the area that's the settling area for the septic field. And there's a lot of questions always about what what should you do? What should you not do in a leach field? Because if you get down into the 14 to 18 inch area, then you're in your pipes and you know, then you have all kinds of stuff going on. So this is kind of like something where I'm really excited to know what you think we could do here. The kids run around here on this area a lot. Um, I don't want to put in grass, something that's water dependent. Um, I had to pull out sticky bushes and other things, but uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And then also, um, I'm always trying to keep the dust down, and if there's any way that we can do screening that also traps dust. So, would love to hear uh, the experts' advice on this area. Screening and natives and leach fields are something that come up a ton in, in my work and in our work as an organization, and we'll, it, we'll talk about this a lot in our workshops. But in here, we, what we do to replace lawn a lot is, is create perennial meadows. And that is just fancy words for using some masses of uh, flowering perennials that are native, like salvias, um, California fuchsias, pinstamens. They're all things that look just as gorgeous as your lav lavender and your, you know, your common um, shrubs in the landscape. And then you add a ton of perennial bunch grasses. And so they, they have really nice, long, deep roots, and they're very drought resistant and drought tolerant. So you only have to water them like maybe a, a you know, like an hour or a month or so in the summertime. Um, so we do that a lot in these kind of areas. One tip for you though, James, is that this, there's a lot of Bermuda grass in here. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing we run into a lot is that people, you can't just put in the meadow without treating the, figuring out what you're gonna do with the bunch, with the Bermuda grass. So really the, the main way to get rid of that is solarization, put, put down, put black plastic for a couple months in the mm -hmm. summer and just kill that stuff out okay. so it doesn't start coming up. And then on top of that, you put um, some cardboard and a bunch of arbor mulch, a couple inches of arbor mulch, and you end up killing off that, that grass and creating a meadow and planting in your natives. Okay, we switched locations and now we're over on kind of my property line. And uh, one of the things I deal with here is a lot of dust. Yeah. I have uh, a gravel kind of operation that's back there that comes in from that way. But there's a big dirt road back here, and uh, so I'm interested, uh, you know, I have a nice fence, but I'm always interested in privacy, but also what's, what can I add value to? Is there any hedges? Is there any pollinators? Is there any uh, thing I can do either inside or outside this fence on my property to help uh, take care of us more? A hedge will cut down on dust a lot because the plants will incorporate it. Sometimes it just takes a while to get them established. And so um, what we do a lot is do some mounding, like on the front of this. So mound some soil on the front of the, the in front of the, the fence. And that won't interfere with your septic mm -hmm. leach field. And then, so then the plants get a little higher already. They get like a head start oh. to do a little mound. And then you can plant your native shrubs on top, like ca coffee berry and California wax myrtle. Mm -hmm. um, there's the California wild rose. There's some amazing hedges. Yeah. And so we mix them in masses. Like you'll do like three toy on Christmas berry and then like three um, coffee berry and then do the toy on again. So you get these different masses of plants. So it's not just like one yeah. clean hedge. And then that gives you a ton of extra habitat value mm -hmm. because each of those plants, like some have berries, some have, you know, are really good for pollinators. So having that mix is really what the key to biodiversity is, is just is bringing in a, a, a bunch of different plants that we've, we've stopped using because we got so used to the typical landscape plant in the garden. So um, cool. I think that that would be a really wonderful, and it's something that I, I suggest to people with bad soils, you know, or like issues with even Bermuda grass like here, you know, then you get a bunch of soil on top that the plants get some good soil to get started in and you get the extra boost of the height for the plants. Would you think, so like I said, I'd rather have that stuff on the inside of my, yeah. so I could see it mm -hmm. and enjoy it, but I thought, oh, if I really want it for dust, I might put it on the outside of my fence. So that's one of those things we'll just have to, as we go through options, make a decision yeah, on, right? Yeah, as we talk about <clears throat> Or maybe it. both. Yeah, and maybe both. Yeah. You know, I mean, th there are some non-native shrubs that I do use that are mm. super fast growing. Um, and so that's an option, like maybe on the other side, you do some things that aren't, that, that really are fast growing, that you, mm -hmm. they aren't, they're beautiful, but they're not like as interesting as the hedgerow that you get okay. on the inside. Yeah, 
You that, know? I like that. Yeah. I like that so idea. So you had the double duty. It's not an either or. It's yeah. a both hand. And I don't suggest vines for people usually because uh -huh. they're just so high maintenance. Yeah. And fi for fire, they're really hard to maintain to stay hydrated. I mean, yeah, up there. I mean, anytime your, you have vines, you start having issues with them strangling trees yeah. somehow, growing somewhere. So unless you're like an avid so, gardener, I just I, no, I, no. I try to stay away from vines. Well, I'm glad you say that because we are, we're, we're, we're not avid gardeners. We're avid property owners right. we are always moving around but we don't spend hours a night uh, manicuring we want to put stuff in a place that it it can be free and that we don't have we can still be free of man Absolutely. that we don't have to manage it <laughs> and that's why these landscapes are so great because they are you know drought resistant the plants mm -hmm. are evolved to, to california's dry summer climate um and they they really if you place them space them appropriately you know, like the the real mm -hmm. like ten feet apart versus like right up next to each other. Then you don't have to cut them and send all that stuff to your bins and there you, you know all that maintenance. So so it's just it's about really thinking about your your whole landscape like in a systemic way. You know, so that it'll make it easier for you. Maybe it's harder to get it going and to get it installed, but then you know you mm -hmm. have a landscape that's that's really joyful. And what I love about these landscapes is that you end up with this other layer, which is the birds and the butterflies and the pollinators and the hummingbirds come in. I mean, they really, it's, a, it's an amazing how fast that changes.